Now here's a bad deal. Just as I was making preparations to leave for Missouri, I copied all of the digitized music off of my blog TV, digital music computer, and lo and behold, if I didn't come back down here and find the whole thing was dead and silent. Now for those who are wondering, this is the trash pick Dell Dimension 2300 computer. The one that was so incredibly filthy. And as far as I know, it just died quietly. No exciting, uh, no exciting pops, no six foot flames. And let me just tell you what, I'm not going to stop using this computer until I feel I've gotten my money's worth out of it. To borrow a phrase, I ain't having it. <laughs> I know, I don't say it like he does. I would make a very poor photonic induction impersonator. But whatever the case, I need to dig that thing out of here and take a look at it. Now, I'm kind of gun shy when it comes to switch mode power supplies and other high voltage, high current, or hazardous frequency circuits because I've had at least two of them blow up on me on my, in my lifetime. I had, a, I had an APC UPS that went under in a flood and spent several days under sewage water and I, was, I had decided that <clears throat> excuse me, I was going to go ahead and uh, clean it up and plug it in and I didn't even hide very far away from it. In fact the only thing that separated me from it was an open door and a corner. Plugged it in and there were all manner of yellow flashes and pops. I've never had a computer power supply blow up on me in an exciting way, except for one time. I had a customer's computer sitting down here, was fixing a routine problem with it, and all of a sudden, POP! Sounded like a gunshot. And it just went completely dead. So I popped the power supply open just out of morbid curiosity, thinking a camp had gone. No. The controller chip had a big old brown hole blown in it, and there were pieces of the chip embedded in the top cover of the power supply. Fun stuff. So I think you can understand why I'm not uh, not thrilled about goofing around with these. And in fact, before I left, I actually pulled the power cords out so that nothing could happen. And yeah, I unplugged the display too, though I didn't have to. But that's being paranoid for you. So let's see if this thing's still dead since the time I left. Go ahead and turn that back on there. And flat panel display's got power. That's good. Let's see if the computer does anything. I don't think it will, though. Yep, still just deader than a hammer. So it's time to haul it out of there and pop the cover. I think it's the power supply that's quit, but we'll just have to see. Okay, got it over here on the repair bench, and as soon as I got it out of that little hutch, I smelled it. The smell of lovely burned electronic components. Something in there definitely shuffled off its mortal coil. Well, nothing else to do but pop it open and see what went bang. Sometimes I ought to be pretty proud of myself. I had no idea I'd gone to the trouble of actually twisting that little cable retainer thing back in place and actually running the wire through it. Well, it didn't take me too long to find it, folks. There it is. There's a whole clump of burned and damaged components right around that Toshiba chopper transistor that's sitting in there. And right there is the little switching controller. And pin 5 of that switching controller is blown clean off down to copper. And the other pin next to it is not looking too healthy either. So it's obvious that something terribly, terribly unfortunate happened here. And I don't have a whole lot of experience in repairing these. I usually don't even bother because when something goes wrong, it usually just breaks down into cascade failures and service literature is usually almost impossible to get. Now Dell did not have a history of cheapskating on their power supplies in their older computers. Most of them were definitely overbuilt for the job at hand. I'd say this one's all oh, of moderate quality. I don't like the fact that it's got uh, TiPo filter caps in it, but I have some much older power supplies that are getting along okay with those. Even uh, some that are approaching their 20th birthday and seem to be doing just fine in other computers. But hopefully, hopefully if this thing's got over voltage and over current protection, as well as general things just went to heck in a handbasket protection, hopefully it shut down before the computer was hurt. I'm optimistic because my external USB hard drive that I had hooked up is definitely okay and there's no massive craters on the motherboard, but as anybody who's worked on these things for a while can tell you, a motherboard doesn't always have to look visibly damaged to have been hurt. 
So I'll have to see if I've got an ATX power supply kicking around in any of this junk that looks sufficient to do the job. And we'll take it from there. But this thing, this thing is going to be stripped for interesting parts like the heat sink and the fan and other pieces that might still be good. And then it's going to the great junk pile in the sky. Now it is worth noting that it looks like at some point some kind of liquid or other contaminant might have been spilled in this power supply, which may have helped to hasten its demise. It's really hard to tell. Here we have a little something entitled, How Not to Substitute Power Supplies When Testing Personal Computer Motherboards to See Whether or Not They Survived a Power Supply Meltdown. This is an old power supply from some K63 based system. I think it was upgraded over its lifetime. The date codes on the components inside all say 9833. It's rated for 300 watts, although I'd say it's a bit light to actually do it. It doesn't have an ATX plus 12V connector for the uh, processor power supply, so I borrowed one off of a dead power supply and just kind of have it very hot wired at the moment. Flip this over to the number 4 input. Well, we got some stuff powering up in here. And we've got a power light. Hey, hey, I think we're all right. I think it's going to be worth finding a suitable power supply for this thing after all. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. Oh, it's not very happy about the floppy disks, but whatever. We'll live for right now. See if it'll go ahead and boot here. It's probably going to try the floppy anyway, even though it doesn't exist. There we go. There it is, all booted up and ready to go. Mouse pointer's moving. Real-time clock is running. In the words of David's farm, this thing lives to die again as soon as I found a suitable power supply for it. So there you have it. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave a comment.